So, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Last time we started with transmission line parameters and we completed the inductance part of it. Today we will be talking the second member of the family of the parameters of transmission line that is capacitance. Now, capacitance is equally important if not more and it forms the shunt part of the line parameters. The only shunt parameter which is of importance because the other one conductance is almost always neglected as already informed last time. Whenever you pass an AC current to the line, the line capacitance draws leading current and charging current is drawn even when the line is open circuit at the far end. In fact, because of this as you must have already learnt your undergraduate, there is that effect called Ferranti effect and that is because of the capacitance. Now, capacitance is also proportional to the length line and that is why for short line we almost always neglect it. And as you know for short line we employ just series model that is R and inductance, no capacitance, it is 0. And this is without loss of any accuracy because it indeed is very small. Now, there we were talking about magnetic field intensity. And I am sure you must have learned the concept of duality in circuit theory in third year or second year. What is dual? Resistance and conductance or inductance and capacitance or your uh, you know what you call uh, Thevenin theorem and Norton's theorem. These are all dual concept of duality. So, uh, another concept of duality here is magnetic field intensity was there, here it is electric field intensity. So, electric field intensity at a distance y from the axis of the conductor is given by E is equal to Q upon 2 pi k y. This k is permittivity of the medium. In certain books or certain authors call it epsilon. So, I call it again started calling it epsilon. Epsilon is equal to epsilon 0 into epsilon r like mu was equivalent to mu 0 and mu r. This was permittivity of the free space, this is of the medium, this is overall permittivity. Similarly, the parallel analogous thing is permittivity epsilon 0 into epsilon r. This mu 0 was 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 Henry per meter. So, this is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 farad per meter and epsilon r is of course, 1 for air like mu r was indeed 1 for air. So, this is a perfect duality or analogous properties shared by magnetic field and electric field. Now, as we have found out inductance of a two wire line, similarly we have to find out capacitance of a two wire line. So, you, as you can see in the figure there are two conductors 1 and 2 or A or B whichever you want. They are shown of different sizes, but they can be of same size. In that case R A becomes 
R B is equal to R, as is shown here. Their current was I A is equal to minus I A. Here the charges are Q A is equal to minus Q B. D is the spacing between the two conductors, two wires. Obviously, D is much much larger than R. That goes without saying. So, what is the capacitance between conductors A and B? Point not one two one upon log D by R. Whenever I write log means to the base ten. Whenever I write ln, natural log means to the base E. One can be converted into another. That formula is known to you. This is that was uh, milli henry per kilometer. Here the practical units are microfarad per kilometer. We always talk of picos and nanos and micros in farads, and of course in electronics still smaller. But even in power lines, it is microfarad. Per kilometer. This derivation you can see in the book if you want, but you must have already done it in your undergraduate. I have no intention of repeating what you have already done. This is a very important parameter called charge in current. I C. Obviously, is equal to J omega C A B into V A B, and it is again amperes per kilometer. Omega, as all of you know, is two pi f. F is frequency, which is normally fifty hertz or sixty hertz for any power lines. So again, I have redrawn the same figure of earlier pages. A B. Only difference is here I am showing capacitance in between them, which is line to line capacitance C A B. The formula we have already computed. Point O one two one upon log of D by R. Would you notice that R is no R dash here? There is nothing like internal flux. There it was. So that is why 0.7788 times R is equal to R dash, but here there is nothing like R dash; it is R only, and this is what the students normally go wrong when they start using R dash also here. There is no R dash business in capacitance. I hope you will keep this in mind while solving problems. Otherwise, even if your whole problem is right, and if you make R dash here, teacher is within his rights or her rights. To give you zero, because they don't know any difference between capacitance and inductance. Then don't say it is a very minor point; it is a major point. Now I can always replace C A B by two individual line to neutral capacitances, C A N and C B N. Obviously, C A N and C B N is equal to two C A B. Right. This line to neutral capacitance. This n is a neutral point. Suppose it is same C A N and C B N, which will be. Then why have two A N and B N? Have C N. Capacitance to neutral. When both are same, then where is the question of A and B? So C N, and that is equal to twice C A B. And naturally, that same formula just multiply by two. So we'll get 0.0242 upon log of D R. This log means 10 am as I am repeatedly saying, so that while can computing, don't make any mistake, and the units continue to be same microfarad per. Kilometer. If somebody wants you to find out in farads per kilometer, I am sure all of you are intelligent enough to multiply by ten to minus six. 
remember one golden rule if the units are large then the number expressing them will be smaller if unit is smaller then the number expressing them will be large 100 paisa is equal to 1 rupee rupee is a large unit so only one paisa is a small unit so 100 many times you get confusion whether i have to multiply by 100 or divide by 100 especially when they are similar like kilometer to miles many people get confused should i multiply by 1.6 or should i divide by 1.6 there you should know at least this much mile is a bigger unit than kilometer if you don't know that then god only help you then toss a coin what are the assumptions in deriving these equations which you might have derived in your earlier courses charge on the surface of each conductor is assumed to be uniformly distributed any assumption in life is not necessarily in fact not 100 percent true right it is only an assumption an assumption is something which is close to what happens in practice it students always study is an assumption but it normally happens i mean most of the students do study id teachers take classes <laughs> they do take classes there are some who may not take classes but that should be minority if it is majority then this assumption is invalid if it is not true suppose it's not uniformly distributed then formula gets modified to this one and now it is bit uh, slightly complicated d upon 2 r gets modified to d squared upon 4 r squared minus 1 under root again microfarad per kilometer there are some examples given in the book based on this non uniformity of uh, distribution of charges on the surface of conductor and see what difference does it make in computation of capacitance and that will give you a fairly good idea how much effect is there of charge being not uniformly distributed in fact not much and that is why we neglect the uh, if charge distribution is not uniform we do not take any cognizance and we can continue to use this formula. But if somebody is fussy, here is another formula and then he can compute it exactly. As I said, if d by 2 r is more than 1, which is normally the situation, spacing is always more than the diameter of the conductor or wire. In that case, we get back our original equation log of d upon 2 r microfarad per kilometer to neutral. d should be replaced by d equivalent for unsymmetrical space. Please understand unsymmetrical spacing is something different than non uniform charge distribution. Here it means this is unsymmetrical. Do not think this is symmetrical. Why? between a and c it is 2 d between a and b it is d between b and c it is d though it may look you symmetrically placed but it is not symmetrically spaced this is however symmetrical spacing because each is d so here you use d equivalent which happens to be incidentally cube root of d into d into 2 d so, 2 d cube whereas, here d equivalent is same as d because d equivalent is nothing but d cube and uh, cube root of which boils down to d again. So, line current is equal to j omega c n v a n ampere per kilometer c n is this is the formula to be used for c n v a n is known to you. Well, here is a big figure shown to you which I have already drawn. 
there was no need to draw, but still since it has been drawn, so you can have a look at it. These are the three conductors A, B, C. This is the equilateral triangle. They are sitting at the vertices of an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle is one whose sides are equal. This is a very important topic in capacitance as I told you earlier, this is not effective in conductance. The effect of earth on transmission line capacitance. Why we have to bother for effect of earth? Because capacitance is a shunt parameter, it is grounded. Whereas, inductance is not a shunt parameter, it is a series parameter. So, we hardly care for earth's presence we ignore. As it is, the lines are quite high from the earth. So, the effect of earth on capacitance can be conveniently taken into account by the method of images. I am sure those of you who have studied a field theory in your undergraduate, they must be knowing what is method of images. Those who know optics, they should also know what is method of images. Now, the equation can be derived when you consider the effect of earth. This is the method of image, this is a conductor, this is the earth, this is height, height, okay. this is r, r, a, a dash okay. and then there can be specific d, b, b dash, c, c dash and so on. So, effect of earth on capacitance can be conveniently taken into account by the method of images and the formula so derived is this. 2 pi k log d upon r 1 plus d square upon 4 h square whole thing under root. So, many farads per meter to neutral. Please remember here there is no micro farad per kilometer, here it is farad per meter. You can solve a numerical problem involving the effect of earth and see how much difference it makes. At least go through the solved examples of, if you do, please do not worry about unsolved. At least solve the solved examples of chapters 2 and 3 and 4. That should be enough as far as this course is concerned. Hydrophobic conductor above the earth is much, much more than D. The effect of earth on line capacitance is of negligible order. In inductance anyway it is neglected, but capacitance also it is negligible. But what happens if you want to consider? It increases the capacitance of line. This is asked in interviews. A teacher may ask you in interview, okay, do not worry, I want to include it. You may say, no, no, sir, it is negligible. You say, no, no, still I want to include it. What happens? And suppose you say it decreases the capacitance, then your chances of becoming IS is also decreased. So, you have to say it increases the capacitance of a line. That is clear from the formula itself. You do not have to apply much brain why it increases. The formula itself tells you. We have done bundle conductors in inductance, have not we? Same thing we have to do in, in capacitance for similar reasons. We also want to reduce capacitance. Why want to reduce capacitance? Anything which reduces the voltage 
which has a voltage drop should be reduced. So, here now you are shown a bundle of two subconductors. This is phase A, this is phase B, this is phase C. The subconductors are from each other at a distance small d and the whole phase A is d 1 2 from phase B, d 2 3 from phase C and d 3 1 from between phase A and C. Naturally, it is unsymmetrical spacing, even d 1 2 need not be same as d 2 3 that is why it is not only d. I have further made subscripts 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, which incidentally also tells you it is from conductor 1 and 2, conductor 2 and 3 or alternately you could have asked me sir why do you not use a and b. Well, you could have very well used d a b, no harm. d b c, d c a, same thing it hardly makes any difference. And now, the equations are for capacitance 0 0.0242 upon log of d equivalent upon under root R d. What is under root R d? d s self g m d. Right? And d equivalent you know already which is the cube root of all three spacings, multiplication of all three spacings. With this, ladies and gentlemen, we finish chapter 3 and we start chapter 4, which is called, the in fact, we are reviewing whatever you have done earlier. This is the representation of power system components. And what is shown in the figure is single phase solution of balanced three phase networks. And if the networks are balanced, why show all three phases? Because the replica of E space, only difference of 120 degrees phase difference. So, go on subtracting or adding 120 degree depending on which phase you are considering. What is shown in the figure is a single phase of balanced three phase networks. This is a source, this is the impedance, source impedance, this is the load impedance, this is the neutral of the generator, this is the neutral of the load and it is connected. Now, there are one line representation of simple power system, line diagram as they call it. This is used in practice because actual diagrams are very complicated. So, for simplicity, for easiness, for understanding, we use line diagram or one line representation of a simple power system. This contains practically everything that is there in a power system. It has shown generator on both the sides, receiving end as well as sending end. That is why now there is no use of calling any end sending end, any end and receiving end. You can send from any end power, you can receive power to any end. Note, For simplicity, we are calling it here generator 1, generator 2, generator 3, there are only 3 generators. Now, it is star connected, grounded through an inductance. All 3 generators are star connected, but some of them are grounded through resistance, some of them are grounded through inductance. So, grounding itself is a big chapter in power system. I am sure you must have all done it in your undergraduate. What is Peterson's coil? What is tower footing resistance? 
all these things you can review, you can go through in that red book or brown book, whatever book it is. There is a chapter given there on lightning and on insulation, insulation coordination or transients, all these things you can read if you want to revise. <coughs> then there has to be a transformer T 1, T 2. Obviously, the generator and transformer has to be step up, if power is going from here to here. If power is going from here to here, then this has to be step up, whichever side you are sending power has to be, because the power has to be sent at a higher voltage, it is cheaper, higher the voltage more power transfer is possible. Now, transformer is also star delta delta star, you may see a, a table given in M G says book the 30 degree thing you know, what is the shift in the phase shift all those things. So, here it is star star solidly grounded, here is the star delta star grounded delta is there is no question of delta uh, having any ground. Then these rectangles are circuit breakers. This is a load, A is a load, load can be on both the sides. Like power can be, generation can be in both the sides, so is the load. Two loads are shown in this figure, load A, load B. And as we already know, load can be represented in three manners load modeling. In fact, load modeling is a very important chapter in power systems. Why? Because load itself is a very important parameter. If there have been no load, there would be no electrical engineering. If you have nothing to supply power, why should you study power systems? We are studying power system because each and every damn thing needs electric power whether it is your computer, whether it is your hair dryer, whether it is your uh, geyser or AC or fridge or vacuum cleaner or whatever device you use. It has a motor, maybe tiny motor, maybe big motor, maybe small motor and that motor has to run from electricity. The input is electric power, output is mechanical power, so it runs whatever you want to run whether it is a mixy, whether it is whatever or a big gigantic industries. Circuit breaker, why do you need? You want protection, you want to protect your system. Why do you wear sweater in winter? Because you want to protect your body from cold, from wintry winds. Why do you wear a hat or a cap? or a goggle in summer, because you want to protect your eyes, protect your body and nowadays all sorts of sun creams are available, as if you have become sports person and you have to stay in the sun for long hours. So, you use those sun cream on your exposed part of your body. And in fact, it is a real danger of getting uh, skin cancer in countries like Australia where sun is very, very strong, even 35 degree centigrade is awful there. So, is in US, 35 degree for us is not nothing, we are tuned to 48, 45, 46, 35 is uh, fair good weather for us, for them it is 35 is very bad. This year in France several hundred people died because of the sunstroke, because of the harsh sun. For the first time 100 degree Fahrenheit it is crossed, so it made a history. For us every day 100 degree Fahrenheit is crossed. So, these circuit breakers are required to protect the various devices, various uh, generators, loads, transformers, so which is shown in a rectangular form. 
what is a per unit system? It is not Punjab University, PU. PU is per unit. I am sure all of you know what is per unit. You cannot pass your degree exam without knowing what is per unit. Electrical engineers. Per unit value of any quantity is equal to the actual value in any units upon the base or reference value in the same units. Units have got to be same in numerator and denominator because per unit value has no units. So, units have got to be cancelled. So, you convert if one of the two units are not same. Various sections in power system are connected through transformers. I was just talking about why they are connected through transformers. And since are connected through transformers, so they have different voltage levels. Because the mere presence of transformer allows you to have a different voltage levels on both sides. Because the transformer is serving that purpose to interconnect two sections having different voltages. Same job is done by frequency converter. If you to interconnect France and England, where two frequencies are not same. Let us start with impedance, because as I said load is the main thing. Impedance per unit impedance is obtained by impedance in actual ohms into base M V A upon K V base whole square. This derivation of this formula is given in the book. If you want, you can go through the derivation, otherwise, you can assume it, and in any case, you have done it in earlier courses. Per unit transformer, sorry, per unit impedance of a transformer is the same whether computed from primary side or secondary side. So, long as the voltage basis of the two sides are in the ratio of transformation. Suppose, it is 11 to 33 kV transformer. So, it is 1 is to 3. The transformation ratio is the small a is 1 by 3 or 3 depending on which way you are looking at. So, if your bases are also in the proportion to 1 is to 3 or 3 is to 1 then it hardly matters whether you are computed from primary side or from secondary side. The value of per unit trans, uh, impedance of a transformer will remain the same. You can read more about per unit things into the book chapter 4 and you can see how a base is changed the per unit value changes. You must have given that per unit value of at a new base is equal to per unit value of the old base is equal to KV base old upon KV base new whole square into MVA base old upon MVA base new. This formula is known to you. So, I have not written it here since it is known to you. Please revise it. What is a complex power in a single phase load? The different types of powers complex power, real power, active power, reactive power, apparent power and so on. Here is the generator shown in the figure having voltage V across it, current is I and here is the load. You cannot get a simple power system than this. If there is a power system, there has to be a source, there has to be a load, this is voltage and current nothing else. And the phasor diagram is the simplest type of phasor diagram. Voltage is a reference most of the time and current is lagging, because 99 percent of loads in practice are lagging loads. Why? It is the induction motor which forms the main part of the load, right from fractional kilowatt to several hundred megawatts of induction motors and all inductors motors have lagging power factor. So, current is lagging voltage by theta, 
theta is the power factor angle. Theta can vary from any 0 degree to say maybe 180 degree or whatever. The voltage is shown as a voltage phasor is equal to voltage magnitude into angle delta and current is I into angle delta minus theta. Here delta is 0. Suppose if there is a some crack and he says no let my voltage have angle delta. So, in that case this is true. What is complex power? I was just talking about complex power. S is V into I conjugate. Why it is complex? Because there is a conjugate. These are phasor quantities are there. There is a magnitude as well as angle. Referring to the last phasor diagram shown to you just now, the units of complex powers are what? Volt amperes, kVA, MVA, that is all we do not go into milli volt ampere that is the job of electronics engineers, communication engineers. They go in a different part of the frequency megahertz, gigahertz. We operate in the just 50, 60, 0 to 100 mega power, but not frequency. So, I was magnitude I angle minus theta in that figure. So, if conjugate will make it plus theta, A plus J B conjugate will be A minus J B. What is conjugate? Change the sign of imaginary parts. If it is A minus J B, it will become A plus J B. If it is A plus J B, it becomes a minus j b. So, here it becomes i angle theta, it was actually i angle minus theta because theta was lagging. If I expand it further, I hope all of you know they are all same. I hope you know these all three are same. Is it clear to all of you? All these three things are exactly same. So, angle theta I can replace by cosine theta plus j sin theta and V i is a common factor to both. And all of us know that V i cosine theta is nothing but real power, V i sin theta is nothing but reactive power. The units of real power is watt, kilowatt, megawatt, gigawatt nowadays we can talk of and the simultaneously correspondingly the units of reactive power is VAR, KVR, MVR, GVAR and what is apparent power? Any one of you? The magnitude of complex power is called apparent power. However, the units remain same. So, P square plus Q square under root is apparent power. What is this apparent power? The rating of various equipment is always shown in KVA, MVA, VA. A transformer of 10 MVA a generator of 10, 10 kVA. So, equipment rating is always shown in apparent power. If Q is positive, it is a lagging current, lagging power factor. If Q is negative, it is a lagging leading current, leading power factor. P plus J Q is supplied by source and is absorbed by the load. 
source and sink. In electronics, we might have read source and sink. Q is nothing but 10 inverse Q by P. Is it Q? It should be theta. That is a problem which somebody else types and somebody else gives lecture. Two should be same. Right. So, P is root 3 V L I L cosine theta if you want to use line values, which is nothing but same as 3 times V phase I phase into cosine theta. Because one of them is same as line, the other becomes line upon root 3. So, root 3 gets cancels here and one root 3 is left. So, they are same. Same thing I can do here also and I am sure you must remember these equations till you are electrical engineer. Once you become city bank then no need or if you start selling cigarettes no need. Synchronous machine. I am sure no power system engineer can forget about synchronous machine as you cannot forget about induction machine. In fact, induction machine is also used as a generator when you use non conventional sources of energy that is what your is main topic. Most important element of a power system is synchronous machine because if synchronous machine is not there, there is no power generation and if power is not generated, we do not need any induction motor who is going to supply power to them. So, mechanical power gets converted into electrical power in synchronous machine. The input is mechanical, the output is electrical. In motor, input is electrical, output is mechanical, just the reverse. Otherwise, more, more, more machine is same. Machine excitation control watts. flow in or out of machine. The equation for frequency is well known to you n p by 120 n is the speed p is the number of poles 120 is 120 100 plus 20 hertz. If you want a two pole machine f is since the value of f is known. So, for a 50 hertz supply for P is equal to 2 pole, the N is 3000 rpm, which is normally required for thermal plant. If P is 4, N is 1500, 1500 or 1500, 8, 750 and so on. Similarly, if f is 60 hertz when you get employed in US, then this 3000 will change into 3600, 1500 will change into 1800 and so on. This phasor diagram is very important. E is the excitation voltage, V is the voltage at the machine terminal, this is the current lagging by theta. If you add to this voltage the drop that you get excitation E f. Delta is called load angle, torque angle and so on. Theta is the power factor angle, 10 inverse Q by P is the current. Actually, the figure is not drawn properly. This is 90 degree because all drops are added 90 degrees. Okay, this should have been a 
this is b right this is a phasor diagram of a cylindrical rotor synchronous machine why cylindrical anybody because it is only x otherwise you would have got x d and x q two reaction theory salient pole this is non salient pole non salient pole is cylindrical rotor otherwise this would have been like this where the air gap is non uniform EF excitation voltage has something to do with watts, delta has something to do with power, real power. This is the simplest possible representation of a synchronous machine. Constant voltage with constant in series reactance and terminal voltage and current. This excess is nothing but X A plus X L armature reactants and leakage reactants. Both together are called synchronous reactants. So, V T can be written as the E F minus the drop in resistance as well as reactance you can always have resistance in real life. Even your inductance will have a some resistance. It, it may not be perfect inductance, it may be leaky. Anybody who knows what is infinite bus? Very good. It is like a sea. If you take a one bucket of water from sea, nothing is going to happen. So, a big system, its voltage and frequency remains constant, even if you draw power from it. Exact analogy is like a sea. So, a large system whose voltage and frequency remain constant is called infinite bus. It is normally asked in interviews again. Consider now a synchronous generator feeding constant active power into an infinite bus. As the machine excitation is varied, current and power factor angle also change in such a manner as to keep the real power constant. This is the subject of our next lecture that is tomorrow. Why this is important? without affecting the real power flow, we can play with, tamper with the power factor angle as well as current. Because if one changes, another has to change, because the total this remains constant. Since you are keeping V constant, these two have to change in a different direction, so that the product remains same. So, this story we will learn, narrate, listen tomorrow, that is Tuesday. So, today any difficulty so far? So, what is load modeling? Load modeling is our last uh, section in this chapter. The load is normally modeled in three ways, the imp constant impedance, constant admittance, constant current and constant power. You must have read the numerical as a load of 5 ampere, a load of 5 megawatt, a load of 5 ohm. So, this is how the load is modeled depending on which study you are doing. If you are doing load flow studies, loads are always specified as megawatt and MVR, P and Q. 
they are doing uh, relaying protection load of fire engines and otherwise normally you have a load in ohms impedance constant impedance constant impedance and then there are complicated load modeling where it varies with voltage the voltage varies load varies and there are several other models in fact you can do a phd thesis on load modeling so that i think we will wait till your mtech is over anything else so why communication lines are run parallel to the power as i told you the other day to save money of the towers or poles because otherwise you have to erect another pole where is that where is the space why transmission line you are not able to erect the right of way each inch of space in kerala if you go to kerala either there is a water or there is a irrigation or there is a house there is no space available soon we will have a same problem in iit campus where do you erect new hostels where do you uh, build new houses for employees faculty each inch is going to be used we have to have a playgrounds we have to have administration building we have to have teaching blocks so we can go only vertically why horizontal there is no space and that is why we have using the same poles or same towers to otherwise go for wireless communication it Don't is having drawbacks to there are always plus and minus in life you cannot have any arrangement where there are no drawbacks where there are always pluses win win situation we do talk but there is hardly a situation which is win win somebody else must be a loser in that win win right anything else